Wait, I have those cards in there anymore. Okay. Do you want to clack or do you want me to clack? I'll clack. Oh, I just cracked. Oh. I don't know which camera to look at. Welcome to A Day in the Field. We're trying something a little different this time. One thing that's really made me happy that this channel has done is it's gotten a lot of people that were either on the fence about hunting or didn't know much about hunting. It, it's kind of gotten them a window into it and, and, and allowed them to see the conservation side of things. One of those people is the most important person in my life, my wife, Elena Smith. Hi. We're gonna talk to her about what it's like to be married to an outdoorsman. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. <laughs> you do this for a living. Now I'm interviewing you. Well, I don't get interviewed quite often. So. You get interviewed more than I do. You were born in Sacramento, California, and you grew up mostly in... Los Angeles and San Diego, Southern California. Uh, most of you know, I grew up in the woods. I was in the woods before I could walk. I, I've been doing this all of my life. You, on the other hand, it's a little bit of a different story. Yeah, I mean, I just, I grew up on the beach and that's about the extent of my outdoor, like that and hiking, but the easy trails, I'll say it that way. Yeah. I never really go off of a, a trail that was built for me. As we were dating, you talked about how growing up, you romanticized the idea of the South and the idea of the rural lifestyle. What was the impetus behind that? And what was like your first like reality check of, oh, this is what it's really like? Well, it started really honestly with two things. It was the Pirates of the Caribbean, which you recently got to see. There's this little scene in the beginning and it's set in the South and it just seems so peaceful to me. And I'm like, I loved that little moment of peace every time I would go on the, the Pirates of the Caribbean. And I just equated that to the South. And then Sweet Home Alabama, uh, <laughs> Theresa yeah. Witherspoon. Of course, like that movie is one of my favorite movies of all time. And it romanticizes the South in a big old way. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's kind of where that started for me. At what point did you see me do something or heard me talk about something? And it's like, oh, reality check. There was a moment when, and it's on TikTok, we were at our downtown apartment. High rise, felt kind of bougie up there. But then I turn around and you are cleaning out antlers in the sink. And I never... <laughs> Never would have thought there would even be any kind of antlers or taxidermy anywhere near my living space. Now they're everywhere. Kind of. So you had to learn a lot about the outdoor lifestyle. What was one of the most shocking or like out of left field bits of information to you? Conservationism. That was like shocking to me to learn that there's a real reason why hunting is done, like, and a, and a reason that makes sense. I have very much, you know, grew up, I, I just thought hunting was bad. Like I, and I just took it as that at face value of like, oh, it's guns and oh, it's, you're hurting animals and you're killing them. And it just sounded awful to me. And I was just really naive about it. And so I think that that was the most life changing part of the conversation to understand the care and the beauty and the circle of lifeness of it. So, so were you, did you not know anything about the regulations behind it? Or did you just thought you just like went out and shot whatever you saw? And well, that's why I thought it. it was even like interesting to learn that there are seasons. I didn't even know that. I mean, I was starting at ground zero. Like I knew nothing. I just thought people picked up their guns and went and shot stuff. I didn't know that there are certain places you can do it. I knew nothing. So, you know, learning about that has been wildly interesting. And that's something that we still struggle with because there's a lot that I'm learning to me is common knowledge that you are yeah. still learning there's a lot go. of times you do that mm -hmm. where and I'm like, be nice to me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm just a baby. Um, I I just and, and I know and, and you're so patient with me with everything. But yeah, there are a lot of times that you'll be like, well, yeah, because flibber flabber. And I'm like, what does that mean? And, you know, that's what it sounds like to me yeah. when you bring something up. So you've been very patient at sometimes not because honestly, I get it. I mean, when when I have known stuff forever and it's just a part of like, what has woven me into a human, it's confusing when somebody doesn't understand it because to you it just seems like that's flipper of ever. <laughs> <laughs> In introducing you to a lot of the things that we do outdoors, obviously I did a few things right and I did a few things wrong. <laughs> How 
should I have done it? I, I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is our fishing trip, right? <laughs> yeah. He had been saying that he wanted to take me fishing. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. I like fishing. Like I did it when I was younger. It was not something that I had access to all the time or anything or like even would think of doing if we had a free Saturday afternoon. But like I like fishing. So I had told him, yeah, that'd be great. He said that we were going to go on like a little trip that would take maybe like half a day or something. Mm -hmm. and we would be in the water. And I thought that sounds cute. Like I'll just, you know, kind of be ankle deep and fishing. And I imagine like trees in the background. And then I asked him, do I need to like have a bathing suit or something? He's like, well, you will get wet. And I just took that out. So, okay, I'll wear one like underneath some shorts or something. We were, what do you call that kind of fishing? Waiting? Waiting, yeah. And I'm 4'11", so like when we're going through the trenches of stuff, the water's up here and I'm still holding my fishing pole. And like I had no idea how intense fishing could get. <laughs> that was not the move at all. But that was just the worst. I don't look back at that fondly, but I guess it's fun that it happened. The highest level of fun. And I've been very careful with you since. Yeah, pretty much, kinda. When have I thrown you in the fire with anything since then? You have been very patient through things, but like you still do think that I am gonna be comfortable in situations that I'm still not comfortable in yet. I mean, even like watching your video and I still am not okay with watching the shot. And I got really emotional the first time that I just saw it happen. I, so I think like stuff like that, you know, but you still learn with me and you still are sensitive and, um, but I'm still not quite there. No. Is there anything that you haven't gotten a chance to be a part of yet that interests you? Well, I guess we did it. I just haven't gotten one, but I want to catch like a bigger fish, you know, like I want to catch a marlin. I've never caught a marlin. That's, <laughs> just, this is, that's a completely different kind of fishing. I think uh, fishing is like still the lane that I feel like I can go down. I enjoy it. Like I said, I can't imagine myself being close to actually shooting something. You don't want to be up on top of a mountain listening to an elk bugle. Or also, that was terrifying. Yet. The first time that I heard that in your video, the elk bugling and like seeing somebody that I know and love in that situation and knowing that that there's this giant creature making that noise and you don't know where it is. <laughs> and like, that is terrifying to me. That's still very, very, very foreign and scary to me to put myself in that position. So we kind of touched on this, but like, obviously you're getting more and more comfortable with everything, like outside of, you know, the bill fishing. Do you think about any other like outdoor goals that you would like to achieve? Well, I do want to go camping. I used to camp in my backyard with my brother. I think we did that like three times. I shouldn't say used to like, I think I'd like to try it, but I would like a little, I, I don't want to like, I don't want you to throw me in the deep end and put me in a uh, tent that is $12 from Walmart. And like, I want a nice tent. I want to go somewhere that I know I'm not too far away from anything. And I mm -hmm. think that I would like to go for fun. I wouldn't like to go. That's where I'd like to start. I'd like to like go with our best friends or something like have a fun little weekend with some wine and um, nature, see stars. What adventure of mine that has been chronicled on the channel, like which one has made you the most nervous? The elk hunting, especially year one. I mean, I, I was so grateful to Will that he went with you. Like we have to have a lot of conversations about this, him and I, because I don't understand the world and I'm trying and I've come a long way. Mm -hmm. I watch a lot of murder documentaries and my head goes in a million different places. Anxiety takes over in those situations and I, just picture all these horrible scenarios and you're my treasure. Like, I don't want anything to happen to you. And like you going to a place that you have never been on public land, you know, it's not like you were going with somebody who owns all the land and they know it back and front, you know, and you, you worked so hard with that, which is what got me comfortable. That and the fact that Will was with you um, made things more comfortable. But I mean, I was a wreck, like, most of that time. My mom came out and <laughs> stayed with me because I was like, I'm just going to think about the what ifs. You guys did end up having a thing that I could communicate with mm -hmm. you on, but only here and there. But that is just so frightening to me just to not know. And we're very close. We talk all the time. And, and I love that. But that was scary. You going to a place you didn't know and wandering around and being up in the woods. And it, it was scary. That's me. the best part of all of it.
Remember that time that you told me that, oh, these people just rolled up next to us. And then I'm like, what do they what do they look like? And I was like thinking, OK, give me the descriptions in case they <laughs> in case he ends up on Dateline. And I don't know. You did not. You weren't on the same level as me of thinking, oh, yeah, I should probably like let her know just in case something happens. I was telling her that because we were annoyed that there are hundreds of thousands of acres and they chose to camp right next to us. And she's like, let me make sure that I could give the police a description for their murder. That's what I was thinking, because so, why else would they just pull up right next to you? Is what I was thinking. No. What adventure on the channel that we've done would you have wanted to be a part of that you watched and you were like, God, I wish I was there. Other than the Becky Bennett show, because that was great. We were there for the Becky Bennett show. I was in the, I was the peanut gallery. I love all your episodes and I, I love all of your adventures with Will, the fishing one with Evan. I thought that that looked really beautiful and peaceful. But at the same time, like, I don't really want to be a part of those because I love watching like those relationships be fostered and, and you guys connecting over something you love so much. So like, I don't think I wish I was. I love that you have those experiences. Maybe we switch it up and say if there was an episode that I would want myself to be in. Mm -hmm. I think it would look something like uh, your episode with Evan. Do you have any advice for anybody that finds themselves thrust into this strange world of the outdoor lifestyle as someone that didn't grow up with it? Just like any other lifestyle that you're not familiar with, I think that it's so important that you listen and um, you try to understand. And that goes with like anything in life, right? Because if the more, the more you know, the more you can understand the people that are surrounding you in any walk of life. And so I, I'm so grateful. And you know, it's, it's, it's really, really, really cool that like you've helped my mom to understand this as well. And it's just so funny to to see the both of us, you know, understanding and sitting there watching your videos and her calling and being like, when does the new one come out? And and someone like Becky as well, you know, and, and all of us that never thought that this was something we would even be listening to. But I'm so glad that I did because understanding that connection with nature that goes back to the beginning of humans, you know, I think is is not something to turn your nose up to. So I'm so glad that you have taught me so much and that I'm understanding that nature and human connection. And it's really beautiful. And I respect that so much. And I'm just glad to know um, that there are people like you that are doing this in that Thank space. Mm -hmm. And I, I would add to that is as hunters, a lot of times we feel like you know, our way of life is being attacked from from a lot of different sides. And, and in a lot of ways it is. But how often have we sat down across the table from someone that thought differently about us and just broke it down to the bare minimum of, hey, you know, we just we don't walk around with a gun and shoot everything that we see. There's there's reasons why we hunt there's reasons for this and there's science behind this when we're seeing you know hunting being attacked in colorado hunting being attacked in washington several other places having ballot measures on that are are kind of the start of the ball rolling of people attacking hunting maybe a lot of it has to do with the fact that there aren't enough of us out talking to people that are different to us. I think that's one of the things we really, as a group of hunters needs to do is, we need to be the ones to, to sit at the table and go, hey, come on, let's talk, let's build a bridge. The best way for us to preserve, you know, our way of life isn't to sit here and yell snowflake and call people names. It's to sit down and have honest conversations with people that think differently with us and show them why we do this and show them why this is important. Because somebody's gotta be the first one to do it. Why shouldn't it be us? I hope that's what we take from this and uh, we'll hopefully do some more. Mm -hmm. Thank you, baby. Yeah. Thanks for watching. For my wife, Mrs. A Day in the Field, <laughs> Elena Smith. Putting that in my Instagram bio. You should.
Uh, thanks for watching and we will see you next time. Good evening. And I'm Leslie Monster and this is Nightline. <laughs> Can we need to stop the... The dishwasher? Yeah. That why are there why are there flies in here? That went in my eye for a second. <laughs> it feels like it's like right here. Can you put it on there?